Okay, so for today, I want to take a look at chapter 5 deals with, we're going to shift gears a little bit. We're going to go from, we're going to go from linear stuff like we dealt with to quadratic stuff. Okay, and so we deal with quadratic functions. Later on in, in, in chapter 6, we'll move on and, and even move into some other uh, bigger functions than this. But for now, we're just going to stick with quadratics. So what are they? Okay, quadratics are functions that can be written in this form. This is the standard form for quadratics. AX squared plus BX plus C. So notice what we've got here now. Whereas we used to be, we used to just have MX plus B. Now, it used to look kind of like that, right? Y equals MX plus B. In this case, we called it different, different, uh, letters. Instead of mx plus b, we called it bx plus c. But same idea. Some, some number times x plus some number. Only now we've added an extra term in quadratics. In quadratics, we add that ax squared term. And so the big difference is now we have x's that are being squared in our functions. Okay? And that does something really important and substantial to what they look like, for example. So if we look... So if we look at the graph of a quadratic, it always looks like a parabola. It's a U-shaped graph. It's not straight anymore. Okay, the highest or lowest point on a parabola is called the vertex. So if the parabola opens up, the vertex is going to be the minimum. It's going to be the lowest point. If the parabola opens down, the vertex would be the maximum or the, or the highest point. The axis of symmetry of a parabola is just the vertical line through the vertex. And so this is really important about parabolas. This makes life easy for us. In math, we always want to take advantage of symmetry. Symmetry allows us to not do as much work. It makes things easier. So parabolas all have this folding symmetry, right? This, this line symmetry or mirror symmetry or whatever you want to call it, folding symmetry about a vertical line right down their middle. In other words, if I draw the right half of this parabola in wet ink and I fold the paper vertically right there, right, you know, right along that dashed line, I will create just the impression, the fold, you know, that wet ink will make the impression of the other part of the parabola. So they're perfectly matched. Okay, here's a couple graphs. Uh, sort of our normal standard prototype parabola is y equals x squared. It just looks like the blue graph vertex at the origin, and it just opens up. Now, we're going to talk about how we can tweak the graphs of parabolas today. That's kind of our, our, our focus for the day. Notice what happens if I multiply by negative 1. It just flips the parabola over, and so now it opens down instead of up. These two parabolas do, however, notice they share the same vertex. right? The highest point of the red parabola, so its vertex, corresponds to the lowest point of the blue parabola. So they both have uh, vertices, that's the plural of vertex, they have vertices at the origin. Okay, so this is kind of what they look like. Share the same axis of symmetry. Okay? Now, what do we do with these guys? Okay, if we want to sketch a graph of a parabola, and let me distinguish this. Sketching a graph is different from actually graphing. If we're going to graph something, where are we going to do it? Yeah, graph and calculate. If we want a really accurate, perfect graph that we want to be able to do stuff with, that's why we've got graphing calculators. Frequently, we don't need something that accurate. A lot of times, we just need a quick sketch of a parabola because typically, for a parabola, we're just we're talking about this in calculus. This morning, we talked about this in calculus in a different context. Uh, parabolas are interesting to us in calculus because we want to know where the minimum of a function is lots of times. And that's, if we go back real quick, uh, in calculus we do lots of stuff like this where, you know, if we've got, let's just scoot back real quick to this guy. If this is my function, a lot of times I'm really, I don't care what the whole function looks like, I just want to know where its lowest value is, right? And so I want to know where the vertex of the parabola that opens up is, and a lot of times that's it. That's all I care about. I don't really care about anything else. I just want to know what the minimum value is. And so for stuff like that, a sketch is perfectly adequate. It works great. Okay, so how do we sketch graphs of parabolas? Okay, we're going to look at a couple different ways we can do this. Now, if the graph is in 
if the function is written in standard form, so it's written in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a and b are just numbers, right? So is c. Then it's really easy for us to locate the vertex of the parabola. The x-coordinate of the vertex, well, real quick, what, what a tells us is whether the, the graph opens up or down. That's it. If a is positive, the parabola opens up. If it's negative, it opens down. So it serves an important purpose, but that's really what it does. Uh, the value of A tells us kind of how, if it's a tall, skinny parabola or a shorter, wider parabola. If A is a big number, then it's going to be stretched upwards, tall and skinny. If A is a smaller number, it gets compressed and, and, and squashed. Okay. But we don't need to focus on that so much. We just need to know, does it open up or down? Here's what's more important for us. We want to find the, the vertex, the coordinates of the vertex. And the way we do that is with this just little formula. So this is one you're going to want to know. If the, if the quadratic function is written in the standard form, then the x-coordinate of the vertex is always given to us by the value of this little equation, negative b divided by 2a. I'm just going to plug in those numbers, b and a, and we'll get back a number. Okay. And then that's very useful to us. Then once we know the x value, I can plug that back into the original function and find the y value. Now I know where the vertex is. And then we also know, of course, that if this is the x-coordinate of the vertex, remember that that axis of symmetry goes right down the middle of this thing. And so if we want to come up with an equation of that line, it's just x equals that number, right? That's the vertical line that goes through the vertex. So it's the axis of symmetry that we fold the parabola around. Okay, so let's look at a quick example. What if we start off with this graph, or with this function, y equals 2x squared minus 8x plus 6. So real quick, what's A? 2. two what's B? Eight. What's C? Six. Perfect. Okay, once I know those, then all I have to do, if I want to find, if I want to sketch this thing, and, and mainly what I want, remember, is does it open up or down, and where's the vertex? And that's typically, you know, 90% of the time, that's all I need. If I want to find the vertex, if you remember, what's the formula for the x-coordinate of the vertex? B over negative B over 2. Okay, good. Negative b over 2a. Good. So we'll just take we'll take those values that we just identified, right? We said, you know, a, b, and c. We'll just plug those in. So I get negative the fraction, negative 8 over 2 times 2, right? Well, negative 8 over 2 times 2 is negative 4 times negative 1 makes it positive. So I get positive 2. So that's the x-coordinate of my vertex, right? How do I find the y-coordinate? Plug it in, right? I'm going to go back and plug that into the original equation, right? The function. Plug in that x value and find the corresponding y value that goes with it. Okay, so if I do that, if I plug that 2 back in, I'm just going to get an answer. I'll just simplify this. So 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8 minus 16 is what? Negative 8. Negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2, right? Just that easy. So now we know what the, what the y-coordinate is. So if I take that as an ordered pair, my vertex is at x equals 2, y equals negative 2. Does this parabola open up or down? <coughs> uh, uh, how come? A is positive. A is positive, good. And, and that's, honestly, that's all we typically need to know. So the vertex is there, and it opens up. Now, if we want to get a little bit more specific, we could just test one point is all we need. The book says two, but one's plenty. Uh, we're going to pick one convenient point on either side, and then we'll just find out what the y value is that goes with that convenient x value. And then we'll just, once we get one of them, we can just reflect it over the axis of symmetry to get its cousin point. And then we just kind of connect it in a U shape. And that's our parabola. That's our sketch. One negative one. So we could, yeah, we could do one negative one. Probably even an easier one here. Now, if, and, and this is, there's just a little bit of strategy involved here. We can make this easier. Now, my x value is at 2, right? I know that the axis of symmetry is just going to look like this. Right? Here's my axis of symmetry. Okay. I want to pick a point that's not too far away from the axis of symmetry, for one thing, because parabolas grow quickly, right? If I pick a value out here like at 10, that's a bad choice, isn't it? How come? If I plug 10 in for x, what's the problem? 
Okay. Yeah, Y is huge, right? It's way off my graph. I don't want that. I want a, I want a value that's, that's pretty close to home here, pretty close to positive 2, because the further I get from 2, the more that parabola is going to move up, right? Because it's not a line anymore. It's a U shape, and it gets steeper and steeper as you move further away from the vertex. So we'll pick one that's close to home. Well, if I look at my choices here, if I want to stay within, like, you know, 2 or 3 of x equals 2, on the left side, I could choose x equals 0 or x equals 1. On the right side, I'm choosing things like x equals 3 or x equals 4. Which of those numbers sound easier to deal with? One. Yeah, the ones you know on the left side. In fact, I'd say zero. Why not zero? If I pick x equals zero, what's the value of y going to be? Six. Yeah, because all the all the terms with an x in them are just going to disappear, right? If I multiply by zero, so why not pick? Just make things really simple and pick uh, x equals zero. Okay, so if I do that, okay, so there's my axis of symmetry that I'd already drawn. Now we'll just choose a value like x equals 0, y equals 6. And now how do I get another point for free? Yeah, if I were to fold this dot over this line, wouldn't it just end up being right there? Pretty much. Right? So I get that guy for free. Okay, and now all I have to do is just kind of connect that in a U shape, and that's my parabola. So it's sort of a tall, skinny parabola. Opens up with the vertex at positive 2, negative 2. Right? Make sense? We're done. That's our sketch. Okay? Okay, now there's a couple other ways we can write parabolas. And, and I know what you're thinking. I can guess what many of you are thinking at least, because why do we need all these other ways? We have one way, that's good enough, right? You know, we can write the, the quadratic functions in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, and that's pretty good. It works in lots of situations, that's great. But we have some other forms too. Vertex form is a really convenient form for writing a quadratic function because the vertex sticks out like a sore thumb. It's right there for us to see. We don't have to do anything, any calculations at all. So this is easier to graph when it's in this form than the one we just did. Now, if it's in vertex form, A has the same meaning as it did before. So A is just telling you, is it opening up or down? And if you want to get really picky, is it tall and skinny or short and wide? But mainly, is it opening up or down? That's about it. Uh, H and K this time are telling us where the vertex is. Now look how easy that is. We don't have to do any calculating. Last, the last example we did, we had to calculate the value of x. It wasn't that big a deal. And then plug that x value into the parabola to find the y value. Don't have to worry about that. This time, I know that whatever the value of h is, that's the x coordinate of the vertex. And whatever the value of k is, that's the y coordinate. So I can just look at it. And by inspection, we say in math, by inspection, I can see where the vertex is. Okay. So that's, that's very convenient. And so then, if the x-coordinate of the vertex is at h, the axis of symmetry would just be x equals h. Okay, so there's one convenient form. Now, another convenient form is what we call factored form, or the book calls it intercept form, either way. And we write that like this. a times the quantity x minus p times the quantity x minus q. a, same thing. All a is doing is telling us, does it open up or down? This time. P and Q, the numbers P and Q are the x-intercepts of the parabola. Okay. So let's uh, let's take a look at a couple examples with these. So what if we've got one like this? Now what form is that? Is that standard form ax squared plus bx plus c? Is it vertex form a times the quantity x minus h squared? It's vertex, isn't it? Right. So it fits. I guess it says right there. So it fits this form. And then the giveaway is the quantity x plus 3 squared, right? That's the, probably the, the, what gives it away most clearly as being vertex form. So this looks an awful lot like the stuff we did back in chapter 2 with absolute value functions, doesn't it? Trying to identify h and k, right? So what is, now if I want to play that same game I did in chapter 2, if I want to identify what a and h and k are, I've just got to ask myself the question. What values would I have to plug into the vertex form to get that result? 
What would A be? Not one half. Negative one half, right? A is just the number that's being multiplied by the quantity that's being squared, right? Okay, so if it's negative one half, does it open up or down? Down. 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 Good. Okay, what is K? That's an easy one. Four. K is four, right? That's just the number that's being added at the end. Now, remember the trick that we get dealt with, and you've done this before. What's H? Negative three. Negative three. Good, because H is being subtracted from X, right? So remember, it's always going to be opposite sign of the operation that connects the X and the three, right? Because to get X plus three, I'd have to subtract a negative to get a positive, right? So H is negative three. Does that make sense? Just like we did in, in, in 2.8. If I want to find the sign of H, it's always going to be opposite of the operation that connects X to the number, right? That's one way to think about it. The other way is, if I wanted to substitute a number in for H, what number would I have to put in there to get the result X plus 3 squared? X minus negative 3, right? It would be the same as X plus 3, okay? So we got A and H and K. Now graphing this thing is a piece of cake. The vertex is where? What are the coordinates of the vertex? Negative 3, 4, right? H, K. So there's my vertex, right? It opens down. That's probably enough. If I want to get a little bit fancier, I could pick a value of x that's, you know, that's close to negative 3, probably something like, well, I don't know, what can I pick? How about, um, there's maximum symmetry. What if I pick the point negative 1? Okay, if I plug in negative 1 for x, I'm going to get negative 1 plus 3 uh, is what? Um, negative 1 plus 3 is two. negative uh, positive 2. Squared is 4. What's, what's negative 1 half times 4? Negative 2. Negative 2 plus 4? Two. 2. Right? So that's how we could get the point. If I plug in negative 1 for x, that gives me the y value. Choose an x value, plug that x value into my function to find the y value that goes with it. Yes, sir? When you're looking for picking points, you don't ever go more than two. Away. Well, I mean, yeah, you don't want to go too far. Okay. Right. Yeah, you don't want to go too far. Just stay sort of close to home. Now, now, you can be, if we were to think about this a little bit here, too, um, you know, I could have picked negative two, but look what would have happened if I picked negative two. Negative two plus three is one squared is 1, and then i got to multiply by a fraction, so I'm going to get, I mean, it's not that big a deal, right? If I want to avoid that fraction, I might want to pick an x value that's going to make that whole thing an even number, so when I multiply by 1 half, I don't end up with a fraction. Yes? What would be a number that's not on the limit? That's, uh, what do you mean not, say that, I don't understand, like say that not, again. Like in, in between the half. Oh, like, oh, you mean like a 1 half or something? So, so if I pick a value, what do you mean like if I pick negative three? Sure. Well, then I'm going to get back four. Oh. Right? If I put in negative three, watch what happens. If I put negative three in there, negative three plus three is zero, squared is zero, times negative one half is zero, I just get y equals four. Yep. Okay, now now when I say, I should be a little, little clearer about that. When I say pick a point, what I'm really doing is I'm picking an x value. And the, the equation is calculating the y value for me. So all I did here, uh, it's a good question. All I did here was I chose x equals negative 1. And I put that negative 1 back into my equation, and then it spat out 2. So I didn't choose two. It chose two for me. I just chose negative one. Does that make sense? So no matter what, no, what x value you plug in, it will spit out y? It's going to give me the y value. Yeah, that's dependent on the function. There you go. Good question. Okay, so so now if, if I get back this point, then I get another one for free right over here, right? Okay, so, so there's my freebie. Now I just connect those in a U shape and I'm done. So even if you chose, like, it didn't matter. If I, if I chose negative 2, all that would have happened was, if I had chosen negative 2, 
I would have gotten back a point right there, and I would have picked that point instead to draw my U. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I could have picked, if I had picked, you know, if I would picked zero, I would have gotten that point and that point. But rather, you don't need a whole bunch of them. If we're just doing a sketch, just do one. One's enough. Okay, so let's look. Uh, let's look at, at another example. Here's here's uh, intercept form, right? This is the form. This is the one of the three that looks like a some number times x minus a number times x minus a number, right? So now, what's the value of a here? Negative one. Negative one. That's just the number out in front. That negative sign means negative one. What is p? Uh, negative 2, isn't it? Because x minus what is the same as x plus 2? x minus negative 2 is the same as x plus 2, right? So p is negative 2. What's q? 4. 4, right? Okay. So that tells me a couple things. a equals negative 1, of course, tells me what? Opens down. What were the p and the q? Do you remember? x intercept. Good. So then if I graph this thing, look what we got. We got x-intercepts at negative x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 4, right? And my parabola opens down. Okay, but I need to know where the vertex is. So we're kind of working backwards here, aren't we? We've got our two points on the side. Now we just need the vertex. How am I going to find the x-coordinate of the vertex in this case if the x-intercepts are at negative 2 and positive 4? Any ideas? Say it again. Say it again. It's the middle. Yeah, it's the middle, isn't it? Because we know this thing has to have folding symmetry, so the axis has to be halfway in between the two. One. What's my algebra way of finding a middle? What's, there you go. Average, right, or mean. I'm just going to add two numbers, divide by two. So negative two plus four is two. Divided by two is one, right? So we'll average them. We get the middle x value is one. So to find the y value that goes with that, what do I do? Always the same thing. If I'm finding a y value, zero. Where, where do I where do I put the x value if I want to find a y value? Always the same. Any situation. If I know the x value and I want to find the y value, I just plug it into the function, right? So if I put in one, I'm going to get x equals negative three, right? One plus two times. Uh, 1 minus 4 is negative 3. So negative 1 times 3 times negative 3 is what? Positive 9? Right? If I plug that in. Okay, so plugging that in, I get positive 9. And so now I know that my vertex is at 1, 9. There it is. I already got my two points. Just connect them in a U shape. Done. Parabola sketched. Okay. Okay. Then the the uh, the last thing, and this is really simple stuff. This is stuff you already know how to do. The last part of five one that they cover is how do you how can I convert stuff if, if I've written a quadratic function in vertex form or in intercept form? How can I write it in sort of the normal standard form? And the answer is simplify. That's it. So for example, if I start off with let's say y equals, here's my, here's my parabola, y equals 1, just a, times x plus 3 times x plus 5, just boil them out. That's it. If I just simplify, that's going to put me into standard form, right? And you guys remember how to FOIL, right? It's just, it's just distributing. If I distribute the x all the way through and distribute the 3 all the way through, right, there's first, right? x times x is x squared. There's outside, 5x. Inside, distribute the 3, get 3x, and then finally distribute the 3 to the 5 and get 15. Add up like terms, 3x into 5x, and I got it. Right? I won't do it right now, but you just tell me how would I do it. If I wanted to, let's say I wanted to simplify this. 
let's say I had y equals negative 2 times x plus 3 squared minus 4. If I wanted to put that into standard form, what in what order would I have to do things here? What would I have to do first? Okay, good. I have to. We have to go order of operation. So please excuse my dear. So I got to do parentheses first. X plus three I can't combine, but then I can square them, right? I can square it out. So I'd have to do X plus three squared, which would just look like uh, the stuff in blue. It would just be X plus three times X plus three, right? And then after I've done all that stuff, I would just subtract four. So I'd have to, I'd have to foil those out, wouldn't I? Right. So if I were to do that, the x plus three times x plus three. Well, x times x is x squared plus three x plus three x. That going to give me six x total. Plus nine. Plus nine. Okay. All that times negative two minus four. Now what? Okay, good. Now we'll multiply. So we'll distribute the negative 2. So that would give me negative 2x two two squared, squared minus 12x, good, minus 18. And then very last thing, minus four. yeah, just combine the negative 18 minus 4, just negative 22, and we're done. So it'd be negative 12x. So, well, no, so then, so our final answer would just look like, now, the, I can only combine like terms. So the x squared and the x don't go together. Right? So we'd end up with negative 2x squared, negative 12x's, and those would combine to negative 22. There we go. That's it. Say it again. Well, no, we couldn't. We couldn't because, because what we're trying to do here, remember, is we're trying to... We're trying to turn this into, if it was y equals, we're trying to turn this into a, a parabola in standard form. And so what that means is y equals negative 2x squared minus 12x minus 22. So that negative 2 is actually important. It tells us that it opens down, but it also means it's a little bit stretched. Okay. So in this case, we can. We'll, we'll do some situations in the future that will be different situations where we will be able to do that. Okay. But for now, with something like this, we can't. Okay, good job. All right, we're set. Um, we have got how much time? 13 minutes.